back a little bit further so we don't get any audio distortion. Some of these harps are, are pretty loud. And I'm just doing a little bit of playing before building a harp. I might get one harp built this afternoon, maybe two. Probably just one, maybe another one tomorrow, but just ended up mailing off a harp today uh, to a gentleman. Um, the next two people, that's another thing I wanted to address. The next two people, uh, hey, afternoon Shane, how you doing? Yeah, the next two people on my heart building list, all I had, the only contacts I had for them was their email and I sent emails out about a week ago and they never responded. So um, John Smith or Derek Bloodworth, if you're out there, uh, I had harps built for you, but I didn't hear any answer back. So the harps I built today, if you're interested, just get a hold of me, we'll set up a, a better way to communicate other than just uh, email. But I've been uh, doing a lot of playing on the flat front at harps. This would be a glazer and rainbow, doing a lot of a lot of uh, techniques that don't involve any breathing, a lot of techniques with just the tongue and just pure sound, not adulterating it with, uh, with breathing. Breathing is kind of a technique that I separate a lot of time from the tongue techniques. I'm doing this. I've actually got a, um, a technique tutorial coming out. It should be out around probably six o'clock this evening on how to do this, but I can just break down what I'm doing here. I'm breathing in through my nose and that's just supplying the air for my body. But the techniques I'm using is I'm taking and I'm bowl shaping my tongue like I would when I'd say lol, lol. How your tongue, feel how your tongue cups and pushes through the roof of your mouth. I'm doing that but without actually breathing or saying anything. Now I'm still breathing for my body to keep me going through my nose, but none of it's coming out of my mouth. And I'm moving the front part of my tongue up and down and also using the ridges on the back part of my tongue and moving them up and down and creating percussive beats and rhythms. And if you hear where I'm going down lower, that I'm just opening up the back part of my throat the same as if you were, you know, if you were yawning or if you were burping, just opening. It feels like you're spreading. And I do that. I, to do it, it kind of feels like I'm flexing the back part of my jowls, but I'm just spreading open whatever, whatever that opening is at the back of the throat. And it just creates a deeper, a longer resonating chamber for the sound. That's another way I modulate the sound, using my tongue, the shape of my mouth without breathing, and then opening up the back part of your throat. But when you open up the back part of your throat, you really can't breathe, so you can only do that for so long before you have to go back to breathing. And as of late, I've, I've been working, really trying to push my, uh, my percussive rhythms as well, the tongue movements, the t -t 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 and came noises, because I've been, in the weeks past, I've really been going over breathing and breath control, and now I'm getting more into setting up some more complex rhythms using my percussive noise, the t -t -t I'm just And there, at the end there, I was cow, 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 key, 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 key. Cow, 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 key, 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 key. And that K noise, k -k -k -k, that comes from the back of the mouth. And using that And I kind of try to think of, well, what would a drum sound like? And then I'll do that for a while, then I'll fall back into that, using my tongue to create the progressive noise without breathing. When I was doing the and the cow, 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 I'm actually letting breath come in and out of the harp. And then when I fall back on my other rhythm, the I'm no longer breathing in and out of my mouth. I'm only breathing through my nose. Hey, Ahmed. 
<laughs> oh, not a whole lot. I'm just uh, doing a playing the harp, going over kind of the, some of the things that I'll have on my tutorial before I start building the harp. I don't know if some of y'all have not seen the shop, but I just spilled my water all over. Check it out over here's my grinder. It says Abga on the front. That's kind of like a motto. It reminds me to always be grinding, always. Then here's one of the machines that I use <laughs> for bending my metal. Here is, and it doesn't, the, the, the bender doesn't have a name yet. Here is my shear, its name's Ed Sheeran. I'm really big into, uh, into weird names for tools. I love naming my tools. Over here, the shop bench is a little bit of a mess. But you can see this is Elvis Presley. And then over here is probably the tool I use the most often, which is my vice here. And its name is Versa, it's uh, Vice Versa. I, I come up with all sorts of stupid names for stuff. And so we got the press, we got all that. Oh, then I've got my, my little anvil over here. That's uh, made out of a railroad tie, it's not a real angle. Um, always got a fire extinguisher when you're grinding and stuff. Good idea to have because you never want to, you know, after the house burns down, be like, man, I really should have had a fire extinguisher. I've got torches. I have a big torch. I have my little teeny torch. And it has this little teeny Dremel torch has some uh, bits that go in the end. You can wood burn and stuff with it. And whenever I do my shipping dowels, I always put Bev Corp on the side of it in USA. And then I sign the back of it. But there's probably another minute or two of playing. Got to go check on the upload, make sure that's going good. That'll be the tutorial coming up. And what's another harp that I've been playing a lot of lately? I've been playing the crap out of my mid-range. Because it's sensitive enough to um, to do all these techniques. Good breather. And also, I can play it faster than any of my other harps I got. For my personal mid-range, I set up really tight gaps. But I also did reliefs in the end. When I was filing it, I filed 45 degree angles in the end here where my trigger bend was. And I also, whenever I was filing it, I had it clamped in and I was filing it, I would waggle the file back and forth so that the gaps here on the end and here are looser and in the middle where your mouth and you're breathing and you're applying all the techniques, those are a little bit tighter. That way you can have a harp that you can truly hammer on because there's more relief at the end because your reed will always flex the most irregular, irregularly where you pluck it. So you want a little bit of extra relief there and you can really set up a harp that you can play really fast. I do really enjoy having a harp that's loud and sensitive that I can also just wail on because a lot of a lot of harps I've gotten from other people you can you can wail on but you can't quite wail on them quite as hard and I do lose a tiny bit of that sensitivity a tiny bit of volume by setting up a harp like that but the playability I feel that I gain from it from being able to play fast being able to hammer on it I really enjoy that here's a standard to Tarzan <laughs> And I can play one of those pretty fast as well. I get a little bit of clicking because there's not, there's just not a relief cut in the end. And to Tarstons, uh, straight out of Russia, they're always a good buy for like under 30 bucks. My favorite of the Tatarstons, of course, is the bass. <laughs> And I just mailed off actually one of the best harps that I've ever made. I mailed it off this morning to a customer and I tried to get a hold of the next two people who were on the waiting list and I couldn't contact them. That was John Smith and Derek Bloodworth. I only have um, email contacts. So the next person, if, if you want to be put on my harp making list, get a hold of me and we'll make sure that we have other contacts other than email because in this day and age, a lot of people, they don't check their email but once a week or once a month or by that time. If you wait a month to check your emails, there's ton of emails and it might just get lost in the mix. So we'll figure out better ways to contact people when they're on the heart making list. But John Smith and Derek Bloodworth, 
if you're out there, I'm making some harps uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, just get a hold of me and I'll get uh, some harps going. But the last harp I got rid of uh, that I had gotten a hold of them for on the internet, um, on email, was very, very sensitive, very loud. It was a very nice harp. And I'll be making some more of them. The one I'm making today is, I uh, don't know whether I'm going to make a mid-range or a bass. I've also been making some beginner harps and sending them out to people for their first harps because my professional model harps probably aren't the best starting place for somebody who's never played before but here's here's an example of the prototype for my uh, my beginner harps <laughs> nice and sensitive enough and loud enough that a beginner can get a lot out of this harp but this harp, it does not miss strike. I do bent triggers on them, and the steel I use requires no no pressure, so it doesn't fatigue a beginner's mouth or a beginner's hand. So if anybody is also interested in the beginner harp, just get a hold of me. I'm building harps from time to time, and still, all of my harps are, the 100% of the proceeds go to help fund the upcoming festival, but I'll play for another moment here, and what do I want to play? Ah, Chancellor. I always fall back on the Chancellor. And, my second part, my first real harp. There's that percussive rhythm again, that to ti ti to ti ti to ti ti to ti ti to, and I'm using that to set up my rhythm as well. And I'm also what I'm doing there that that hollow chalk noise is me taking my tongue from the roof of my mouth and sucking inward. The to ti ti is being used with my tongue. The hollower drawback noise. I'm taking my tongue and I'm slapping it downward and sucking in just a little bit and curling my tongue making I'm I've been using my tongue more to create channels more to set up percussive rhythms it sounds to me it reminds me of kind of almost like a like the the noise of hitting a drumstick on a wood block and there's lots of ways you can use your mouth and your tongue to set up percussive noises and also to set up drum beats. Uh, let's go over setting up a drum beat. This is, a, this is an old technique I've already went over, an old uh, advanced jaw harp technique of the week, but using your pinky finger, you can set up complex drum beats. All I'm doing there is I'm slapping Oh hey Harry Sams, what's up, dude? Yeah, I'm just I'm just getting ready to uh, do a little bit of building. I'm like, oh, with this live thing. Last week when I went live, a lot of people tuned in, a lot of people commented. Even my mom was over at my uh, aunt's house, and they put me up on the big screen TV, so my mom was able to watch me. Mama Beb, she's she's a righteous lady. But yeah, um, using that using that pinky finger for the drum beat. And Aries, I've got another uh, technique tutorial, and you've been playing the, the harp longer than me. You probably already know a lot of these things, but I've got a technique tutorial coming out here, probably around six when I get the harp build. It takes me, on average, it used to take me four to five to six hours to build a harp. Now I'm looking at about three, three and a half, on four hours on some of the uh, tighter bass harps. <laughs> If there's any techniques, anybody, I'll I'll stay on for another minute or two. If there's any techniques or if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and ask them. I'll do what I can. Uh, I haven't been playing the jaw harp for 50 million years. I played it a ton of hours in the year and three quarter, almost two years that I've been doing this. But 
I put a ton of hours into the time. A lot of people, you know, they'll say, oh, I've been playing 10 years, but if you're not applying yourself, you know, every day, working on your techniques, drilling stuff, and really getting in, really immersing yourself in the harp. If you take and every day, even devote 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever time you have, if you devote that little bit of time to the harp every day, you're going to grow so much faster in your technique and your understanding is gonna grow a whole lot faster if you can devote a little bit of time every day than if you know, you'll know you play an hour once every couple months. So what I've done is because it's easy, this is out here in my garage where I build harps, where I store a lot of my harps. If they're out there in the garage, you're not in and out of the garage all the time, it's hard to you know make time away from what you're doing to go get a harp. So I like to leave a couple harps laying around my house, in my living room, in the bedroom, in the hallway. So if you're just even walking through your house, you can pick up a harp and get that little bit of harping in there. And that really helps to get your time in practicing, to have your harp hidden all over your house. And it's really nice for irritating the wife or if you have animals, just follow your dog around playing uh, theme music. Sometimes I follow the animals around and play a little, play a little jig or play a little bit of theme music as they walk, you know. Get something low for Magoo, the uh, the meathead. He's a uh, he's our white boxer, white and black boxer, and it's a big square meaty head. So he he deserves something lower. Whereas Miss London, she's more of a spaz. You need something. She's our our hunting dog. She's I think um German short hair mixed with some some blue healer. Oh yeah, Ari Sands, my handicap is that I often end up with the same rhythm. I try to imitate tunes from blah, blah, but they don't. Yeah, there's, dude, I totally feel you on that. So many times, like if I, there's a what I call a predatory or parasitic rhythm that I play most often. And, you know, a lot of the times I'll be doing something different. And then my, like the rhythm I worked on for two weeks, my hillbilly rhythm. The... Now I may be playing a different harp and playing something totally different in outer spacey. Mm, I'm getting a lot of clicks out of you today. And no matter what tune I'm playing, a lot of the times I fall back into that same that same rhythm, but I try not to let it bother me too much because I'll play that rhythm for a little bit and then I'll be like, okay, I fell back into this same channel. Can I cut another channel? Can I branch off? But you know, I'm playing something outer spacey. And I fall back into that same rhythm that always gets me. And I try to cut myself a channel and even if I fall back into that rhythm, I'll cut myself in the channel in the another direction. So. I wouldn't worry too much about that same rhythm that always comes back because when you come up with a good song, you played a lot and you have a lot of muscle memory in playing that and you always fall back in that rhythm, don't let it frustrate me because I used to, you know, get kind of frustrated about it. Like, Gosh, dang it, I'm playing that same song. I want to make another song. No, I'm just going to use that to branch out and see if I can turn it into something different. Happy to know I'm not predatory. Yeah, it it is the rhythm that that you like the best, so it's the strongest, so your brain will always be like, oh, I love this, I'm gonna do this again, even though you're trying to do something different, but I try not to let it frustrate me too much. I'll go ahead and I'll just go with it, and just flow with that rhythm that I fell back into and find other channels to carve out, because when I started playing the harp, I only had one rhythm, one way of playing it, and it was those deviations off of you know the beaten path that I've already forged that led me to where I'm at today. And I think my my theory on music, and I am not, I did not go to school for music. I don't know too much about, you know, classical music and, you know, song construction and all that. But what I think of is the brain likes to find a rhythm. I try to first set up a rhythm. Something that the brain can follow. I don't start off, you know, doing something gnarly that's, too off the beaten path. I want to play something with a rhythm, something where people fall into it, something catchy, and your brain follows that pattern, and it's like, huh, I get it. I understand the pattern, and it begins to anticipate the notes and the rhythms that you're playing. And then what we do is I break that pattern. I'll be playing a rhythm and let somebody get used to figuring it out, and your brain says, oh, I figured out the pattern. I like this. I know what's coming up. The they, they likes that rhythm, and then we're going to plan a little surprise. We're gonna 
Oh no, that's not a very good idea, but... And then you go back into that rhythm. Because your brain, it, follow, it music is a pattern that your brain follows. It's like, oh, I like this rhythm. I can I can kind of predict what's coming up. And then boom, there's a surprise. Your brain's like, oh, you fooled me. And then you go back into that rhythm. But you can't put too many surprises in there. You have to follow the pattern or follow the rhythm in order to break it. But you can't break the rhythm without setting up a rhythm first. So there's setting up that pattern for the brain to follow and breaking it, give your brain a little surprise. Like, oh, wow. Like if you even hear, listen to songs on the radio, there'll be, you know, catchy rhythms and then there'll be little breaks, little surprises. You're like, oh, and little noises and stuff. Uh, so setting up a rhythm that the brain can follow a pattern that it can learn and then breaking the pattern to give your brain a little surprise, a little reward. And then going back into that pattern, I think is kind of my, kind of my philosophy when it comes to, to music. You can only break the pattern and give the brain a surprise if you first established a pattern. If you haven't established a pattern, then there is no surprise. It's just all noise. But I'm going to leave you all with that. I need to get I need to get uh, the heart building up on the way. Hey, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Aries, good, always good talking to you, man. Uh, well, like, share, and subscribe for more Harpery. And thank you so much for showing up for the live video. I'm going to get started on uh, building the harp. And then I'm going to have a couple beers and relax. I might barbecue. I, I don't know. But... Like, share, and subscribe for more Harbury. Harp out.